Welcome to Sunwave TV. We are backstage at the Sick of It All, Mad Ball, and Vision of Disorder Sideshow. Yeah. Halfway through Soundwave Week. We're here with Lou, lead singer of Sick of It All. How are you going yes, today? Yes, I am. I'm doing good. Doing good. You've been catching up with a few brother bands, if oh, you will? Oh, yes, yes. It's been really good because we got to see uh, not just you know, Mad Ball and VOD, who we, we always, we've played with Mad Ball for years and toured with them, but I got to see my friends in the Cancer Bats who I haven't seen in a while, the kids in Polar Bear Club. I call them kids because I'm, you know. <laughs> Uh, like an elder guy, you know, the guys in Slayer, uh, we toured with Slayer in 99, their road crew, friends of ours, you know, it's a whole mess of people, you know. Yeah, cool. So do you find like sort of going out on tour and sort of seeing, you know, absorbing a lot of music, playing a lot of shows and stuff, does that kind of feed back into your writing and stuff? Or, cause I know yeah, you, it yeah. actually does. I mean, it affects you a lot. Uh, seeing new bands, it, uh, with us especially, it's not like if we see a new band that excites us, it doesn't, we don't go like, wow, we have to steal their style. We're more like, we have to, you know, write the best thing of it all we can because they've inspired us to do so, you know. Some interesting, well, not interesting, but battles in terms of independence and labels and sort of the old world and the music industry and stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard coming from a punk and hardcore scene because people expect you to be so super moral and all that, but it boils down to you're trying to make a living at something you love mm. and We've been pretty, we, compared to uh, mainstream rock or whatever, we're pretty fair with what we do. We try to keep our costs down so our fans don't, you know, lose money and have to pay exuberant prices for shirts or tickets or whatever. So it's, it's kind of hard. And then uh, people judge you on what label you're on and all that. We're like, but we're the same band, you know, we're the same guys. You know, we're not, we, we weren't given money by some corporation to be like, okay, now oh, sing about how work. good this is, you know. How good smoking is here, sing about it. You Do you know. remember your first show? My very first show, yeah. I went to see Black Sabbath and Blue Oyster Cult at Madison Square Garden. I was like 11. Amazing. Yeah, was Ronnie that, James Dio yeah. was singing. Oh, dude, I saw Ronnie James Dio out with Heaven and Hell a few years ago. He's like, he's like this big, and he's wearing like velvet pants, and he's yeah. like, you know, this this little wizened, awesome he was a little wizard. wizard of rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's that voice peace, is wizard. just, <laughs> I can't imagine it in like a big arena like that. Oh, but just yeah, and he was amazing. Amazing. Was and he a part first, of your singing my um, first, thing? I mean, you, yeah, you got no, a different I, I style. Can't. <laughs> Don't call me a singer. That's yeah, yeah. an insult to Don't singers singer. everywhere. I like to shout. Uh, yeah. Nah, you know, like, I, I love guys who people can sing. They're great, but I was more influenced by, you know, like, people with good rough voices, you know, Tom Waits, uh, you know, and then definite old hardcore guys like the guy from Negative Approach or Crumb Suckers. They all had great gravelly voices. You know, the New York scene was a big influence on us. It was a usual crowd going up. Modern hardcore. It's, You've talked well, about modern hardcore. What's that's the, the difference? Thing. It's so many. Each yeah. generation has their own take on it. And yeah. how do you think it's evolved? I, it's getting harder or getting. It softer depends. On or, each other. There yeah. are some bands that still have a sound kind of like ours or Madball or Agnostic Front or that era. But then there's more of ones that got, got into later hardcore, like Shy Halud, and they, they they take more. They they love hardcore, but they take more from the Pantera sound, and it, it begins to me to lose its. To what? me, because yeah. I'm older, it probably loses its soul. It sounds more mechanical. Yeah. But to that 15-year-old kid screaming those words, that's his heart and soul, his passion, you know? So I can't come down, like a lot of my friends come down on the, what some people call hard. They go, that ain't hardcore, yeah. blah, blah. You know what? It's to that person, it's their hardcore. You can't take away from that. Is it weird sometimes playing with, like, is it weird? Um, playing with your brother for this long, is it? No, it's not the same. at all. Yeah. Uh, I have... It's kind of special. All together is four of us yeah. uh, in my family, boys, and we're each a year apart. So the two older brothers hung out, and me and my brother Pete hung out. So we've always been together. So that's and nice. then with Armine and Craig, we've been in a band together so long, we're all like brothers. But it's good. I'm kind of like a buffer between, uh, like, when there's an argument, say, like, between uh, Pete and Arm on the drummer, 
I'm the buffer. <laughs> but if there's an argument between me and Pete, it'll be Craig is the buffer. You know? <laughs> so it's, like, it's good. We all protect each other and keep it, yeah. keep it si sane. And you, know? and you got a good, yeah, it's good to have that sort of solid dynamic. So, yeah, yeah cause people, and it's nice to have, you know, keeping the same people and the same sort of alchemy. I mean, I mean, there's been some changes, but you guys have yeah, been together yeah. for a long time. Who would you no, recommend someone, for people to check uh, out the sound wave? Shai Hood? Never no. recommend Shai Hood. Yeah. <laughs> Stink. The Larry David of hardcore. Yeah. As you would say. Yeah. <laughs> what was he? The, uh, no, I said no. Woody Allen. Yeah, Woody my, Allen. My drummer said Larry David. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, can I say, what's, yeah. the, what's the name? Well, I don't know if I can say the name, but the fuck. Yeah, it? fucked up. No, fucked you can't. It's, it's the internet. They, I love them. Insane. You know, like I said, Cancer Bats, Madball has. Madball is one of those bands that fly under the radar. They're great at what they do. And if you went to see them, you'd be like, wow, these guys are really amazing, but I feel I've heard it before because they've influenced so many other bands, you know? It's always strange when you experience it backwards. Yeah. And you see the kind of... Well, that's like, last year thing. you guys had the cro yeah. on here. Oh, dude. They are a huge influence, not just on hardcore, but I remember reading an article of Metallica when they were doing Masters of Puppets, and they asked James Heffield what he was listening to, and that was the first album. He said, oh, cro Age of Quarrel. So there's a lot of, of cross-pollination. Oh, Even yeah. Though, you know, Metallica yeah. have gone in sort of a, you know, they've into a yeah, they've become they were, a way of life you can't sort take of thing. anything away from there i'm not taking away from do. it yeah no, i mean saying, yeah you know. they do what they and, do uh, and they're beloved and the funny thing to make it a complete circle metallica mm. when they did their first record came to new york city they stayed at a friend of ours house named cj <laughs> craig our bass player was in a grade <laughs> school his brother roadied for anthrax he used to go as a little 10 year old kid to see metallica rehearse to write their first album so in your face everybody <laughs> Yeah!